sure did. Look at that gross thing. Yeah, it sucks here. Uh, I don't think we should let her prevail in all this. Just a little bit, though. Not a lot. Just some. The crone old Milda uh, sees her companions gathered by their pyre. A little flame is that shall never warm ye here, much less survive the night. Hear us, Eastlock. Make the night wings suffer. Rookie trots forward from your ranks. Listen here, you old bag. You don't scare any of us one bit. You or your buddy Eastlock. Now, we doing this or what? Rookie is, uh, brave. It does seem to have drawn Udmild's attention, however. Rookie begins to squirm a bit. Then Udmild moves her slender figures to her mask. Oh my god, you're cool. Foolish. Eastlock shall, will, shall grow. Oh, okay, you're just... You shall consume ye ere your little flame has died. That we shall ensure. Uh, Udmild sleeps, slides off toward her followers. Rookie remains motionless for a time. Uh, whoops. Yeah. I think you made a boo boo there, friendo. Okay. So. Can I see what they got going on? The fuck is that? Uh huh. So those just look like. Oh no, they look also look like snakes. Smaller snakes. Uh, what's this? Okay. <clears throat> right. Okay. Uh, I want a big, a big area. Oh, Jodariel. Okay. Uh, let's do Tizo. And Edwin? Alright everyone, we can take them. No matter where you go, you slog Oh my god, I don't care. Shut your fucking face. Okay. Oh right. Right, I, I kinda of forgot how the how the game works for a second. Oh! Oh. Okay, hold on. Let's do some murdering. Okay. Oh! That was... Oh, wait. That worked out well. Where'd the ball go? I have it. Wait, I don't have it. Where'd the ball go? Oh, it's right there. Jesus Christ, I'm blind. Eat shit! Hell yeah! God, okay, I need I need a uh, way better focus here. Okay, that was not worth it. I guarantee that was not worth it. Uh oh, oh buddy, no! Oh shit! Okay. Fuck. Okay, Tizo's back. That's good. Play defensively. Play defensively. Oh, shit. Wow. The hope loss is really bad. That sucks. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, I need to be more careful. Fuck off. How? I don't know how far Tizo can flutter. Oh. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah! Fucking free goal! 
Oh shit. Okay, well, that sucked. That wasn't my best goddamn move. Okay. Go, babe! Yeah! Okay, the, uh, this game is fucking hard. Especially for the me, who is not a sports ball sort of person. Uh, oh wait, that was stupid. Why did I do that? Okay. Play defensively until somebody else is back. Why is Hedwin at infinite? Because he got a goal, I guess? Yes! Hell yeah! Okay, Tizo is like... Okay, well, okay, maybe it's not Tizo. Maybe it's the fact that I'm playing more defensively. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't care, my dude. I don't care about your... What is that? Oh! Fuck! Hell yeah! Yes! 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 I fucking did it! That, that was dodgy at the end there. <laughs> no, hell no. They suck. They suck ass. I'm the best. It would seem our adversaries failed to unnerve us. Uh, Tizo praises everyone's courage against Udmild and the Withdrawn. Nice work, everyone. Never thought I'd have to stand against a bog dweller. Eastlock, we have failed thee, and the deed shall be repaid in blood. As for ye fools, you shall be consumed, and everyone around ye, from the soil to the stars, you shall see. All right, blah blah blah. Cool. Did she hit level three? Yeah. Okay. Focus straight. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't. I, I don't care. Uh, what do you get? Hmm. Let's see. Ooh, that would be a good one. Yeah. And Tizo gets it. Let's see. Uh... While fluttering and zipping, Tiza moves much faster than usual. Ooh. Let's do that one, though. We'll get that one next time. Because that one sounds very helpful. What's up? Having prepared... Ugh. Having prevailed against the withdrawn with ease, you and the others have some moments to recover from the ordeal and the relative safety of the black wagon. So, when can we get out of here? What, Greentail? Had enough of Udmild's hospitality for the time? Oh, Jody. Yeah, thanks. I'm good. The reader and the stars will point the way, as ever. It's just... So far, we've kept on going north. If that's the case again this time. The Sea of Solas spreads north and west from here for untold leagues. I cannot tell you when last the vessel dared to sail those waters. Tizo asserts himself during the conversation. What is the matter, little one? Uh, Tizo is trying to get you to come look at something outside the wagon. Reader, please go see what he wants. You excuse yourself and follow the imp into the dark night. Uh, what's going on? You find Bay and the lone minstrel already gazing up at the stars. Can you not read the stars yourself then, Mr. Mister Minstrel? I fear it is not so simple as matters of can or cannot when it comes to me, Bay. We shall see what the reader has to say, for this is her charge. And here she is, in fact. Thank you for fetching her, Tiso. Reader, it would seem the skies have cleared to some extent. Please, look upon the stars and see where they compel us to go next. <coughs> Hopefully not north. Definitely north. Whoa. Cool. The rights beckon you still further north, toward the middle of the Sea of Solas. That's not good. You're joking, right, sister? Does the reader seem the joking type to you, Greentail? We do not argue with the stars. We talk like we, we can just go right out into the water. Pardon my interruption, though. Perhaps we can. Say what? My client, Sandalwood. He has a way of anticipating such eventualities. 
West of here lies a palace called Big Bertrudes. The proprietor is an old companion of his. She may be able to assist us. Edwin's smile returns. That sounds like our best shot right now. Let's pack it up and move as, move as soon as possible. Uh, totally. Who wants to talk? Oh, hey, Bard. Greetings, reader. It is good that you are here, for there is something that I wish to tell you privately. Do you have a moment? I shall not keep you long, though I know your time is precious. Yeah. You bid him to continue and make, your, cl make clear your interest in whatever he has to say. Very well, and thank you for your time. Uh, and I should further note, matters that pertain directly to the rights I must reveal to you alone, for thus I am obliged. In any case, when you confronted the withdrawn and witch Udmild, you might recall she intended to invoke a certain name. Eastlock, the Astralborn. I hesitate to say it even now. You would be forgiven if you took the ravings of Udmild for mere nonsense. However, her words, as it turns out, ring with a certain truth. Before the Union of the Eight Scribes, when first they found themselves here in the Downside, this land was even less hospitable, if that can be believed. It was ruled over by the great by the greater Titans. The one called Eastlock was the eldest and most fearsome of the lot. Just the same, the Scribes managed to defeat it. They later used Eastlock's own hide and eaker to bind the Book of Rights. However, Eastlock did not truly die, for by some accounts, it seems to be incapable of death. The creature is regenerating even now, though very, very slowly. Its vow is to devour this land and everything in it. Only then can it return unto whatever plane that banished it to ours. So in a way, it is an exile, just like you. If ever should the creature be reborn, it shall be many ages hence. Thus, the raving of Udmild are more or less inconsequential for the while. Yet, the history of Eastlock is inexorably linked to the rites, and therefore must be known. I trust your research of the book shall lead you to discover more in time. I hope all of this is some reassurance, and now I leave you to, more, to your more immediate concerns. I shall go check to see if everyone is faring, how everyone is faring at this time. He heads out into the evening, bidding you a good rest for the evening. Uh, hi Sandra. Uh... Ask what is on her mind. I do appreciate the effort to make small talk with me, reader. Anything to break from the monotony of staring at the void within this place. Not that I could see it if I tried. <laughs> she laughs at this, or maybe at herself. Certainly, I can make talk with my fellow Beyonders, trapped here as they are with me. You might expect that we all would keep each other company. There is just one problem there, however. We were all sick of one another. She laughs again, perhaps not at her joke, but instead at her predicament. I do exaggerate to some extent, but there is a certain truth in this. We have been stuck together long enough that we have grown more distant rather than more close. But I'd best not wear out my welcome with the likes of you, as I have long since done with all the others here. So carry on for now, and if those fools with whom you travel learn something, come bring them forth to me, and I shall see to it they learn some more. Uh, cool. Later, Sandra. You're cool. You're a very, uh... Well-designed character. Let us continue our journey, then. Big Birch Roots. That's a cool-looking place. I dig it. I super-duper dig it. This is the place. Let us go to see my client's companion as soon as you are ready. Uh, I will seek Big Birch Root. Big Bertrudes is a sickly gathering of bog dwellers who stay within shadows, yet you can feel their eyes surveying everything. The lone minstrel steps forward. Sandalwood sent us. Those words are enough to make the bog dwellers snap to attention. They emerge from the mud and dark and begin inspecting your black wagon with their strange tools. One of the bog dwellers slithers forward. She is larger than the rest and leaves no doubt that she commands the others. Thou speakest the name Sandalwood. We would know his whereabouts. Reveal them to us. Good day to you, Big Bertrude. It is a pleasure to meet you at last, for Sandalwood always spoke highly of you and your handiwork. Uh, he did, did he? In turn, we know who thou must be. Yet thou speakest of the past. Sandalwood, doth he yet live? Speak plain and quickly. To be quite frank with you, madam, I do not know for certain, for I have been apart from him for some time, carrying out his will. Though I have every faith that 
I, Sandalwood, lives. As for his current whereabouts, I understand that he awaits us somewhere near Wakingwood, beyond the waters. We wish to seek him there, though as you can see, our wagon is ill-suited for the task. The one called Bertrude frowns at this, studying the lone minstrel all the while. Ugh, indeed. Then leave us. Return at dawn. That is all. <coughs> Ugh, okay. Maybe I'm not the best suited for character voices. By your grace, Big Bertrude. The lone minstrel turns away, but Hedwin stops him. Hold on, are you sure about this? Leaving the wagon in, in their care? All should be in accordance with my client's plan. You keep calling Sandalwood your client. He must reward you well. I, in a manner of speaking. He helped me find a sense of purpose I thought lost. Hedwin nods at this, then turns to you. Well, my friend, I guess we'll see what happens, right? I'm off to let the others know. You find yourself with time for your vocations, while the bog dwellers go about their business. Ooh, okay. Uh... Let's do that, let's do that one. I will study in private. You find a relatively quiet clearing to study the Book of Rights, with undivided attention. Through greater understanding comes the reader's influence. Uh, okay. I will focus on... Why can't I do that? Uh... Okay. Let's do presents. You attune yourself to the strange and mystic properties of the Book of Rights, embracing such as po embracing such as possible that which cannot be explained or truly known. Inspiration comes to you in a flash, whether from the book or from within, you cannot tell. Cool. Uh, let us continue? The lone minstrel finds you early the next day. Reader, it is ready. Please, come have a look. The others are already there. Uh, sure. Ooh, this place is pimped out a little bit, huh? The black wagon appears different now than it did even a day before. The hall is fully sealed and reinforced, and all manner of nautical equipment adorns the port side. I... wow. You people seeing this? I'm gonna have a look around. The wagon should be fit for sea voyage. Let us depart at your earliest convenience. What about Big Bertrand? She then appears, as if on cue. Tell that Sandalwood he owes us twice over. If I may, Big Bertrand, could you tell him yourself if you wish to accompany- wait. You could tell him yourself if you wish to accompany, uh, accompany us in our voyage north. Our group would welcome someone of your vast experience. Dare thee make flirtations upon us? No, I... Enough. But should ye see that Sandalwood, tell him also to come and visit us again. Now, be gone from here, and tell no one that we were paid in favors. <coughs> ah. She slithers off without another word. Soon, the lone minstrel breaks the silence. We are fortunate that she assisted us, but we should go, just as she said. I know the navigational controls and shall explain. This is so exciting! I don't know how to swim! Uh... Tizo seems to share Bay's enthusiasm for heading out to sea. I am beginning to feel ill already. Set sail! Ooh, okay, Worm Gulf. I, I need to take a drink. Hold on. Ah. Boy, that was a long trip. Whoa! Cool. That's sick. Okay. Looks like there's little islands and shit to explore. You and your companions watch the sea as your wagon rolls over the gentle waves. We have crossed into Worm Gulf. I hope that all of you are acclimating well. There is no acclimating to these worm infested waters. We risk everything to sail here. As long as we follow the cold current Big, Ber Big Bertrude indicated, we shall be safe. If the next ride is in the middle of the sea, how will our adversaries meet us there? They shall find their way as we find ours. It is all part of the scribe's design. Now, reader? Please confirm the next point on our sea journey. We seek the Hulk of Oars. 
Uh, sure. 